I have a confession to make. I messed up big time this time. I got a needle stick on my left finger of all places. Not my right one, it's fine. My left finger, Ugh, so embarrassed. Let's talk about it though. Here we go, are you ready to get your vaccine? Okay, I'm gonna give your arm a squeeze. Here we go, and one, two, and three. Good job, that wasn't so bad, right? You did so, ow. What, what just happened? Did I just, sorry, sir, one minute. Did I just get a needle stick on my left finger? So, yes, that actually happened to me, y'all. I'm so embarrassed, but it's life, things happen. But I wanted to talk a little bit more about needle sticks, how to avoid them, what to do when you have a needle stick and why it's important not to just blame yourself and to feel bad or to beat yourself up. Things happen, mistakes happen, but we learn from them. So welcome to my channel. This is Latina Nurse Wellness with me, Fallon Lopez, RMBSN, CCRN, and I'm a certified health and wellness coach. I love helping nurses create healthier habits of their mindset, of their self-care, and of course, spiritual growth, their faith, these things are so important to me and I wanted to create this platform to talk more about these topics um, and today I wanted to talk about needle stick prevention and how to take care of yourself afterwards. So back to the story. A couple weeks ago, wait I don't like this camera, <laughs> there it goes. A couple weeks ago I got a needle stick, so embarrassing, I really didn't want to even think it was like a really big deal. But I, overall, I'm proud of myself for how things turned out. It could have been a lot worse. So I work in the vaccine clinic and I was giving the Pfizer vaccine. I was having a blast. I was in the nitty gritty, giving patients knowledge, debunking myths about the vaccine and about COVID and helping people change their negative beliefs towards even healthcare. It was a great feeling. But then one faithful day, I took my eye off the needle for just a quick second using both my hands to activate the safety device and ended up getting a needle stick. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> I was like, how could this happen? I've been a nurse for nine years. I think I've had one other needle stick incident before I gave the shot, but this was my first time getting it after I gave the I am shot. So it was a bit of a reality check. I felt like at first it was okay. I didn't, you know, I instantly went to go wash my hands. I didn't think to um, quickly follow up with my manager right away. I was just like, well, I'll tell her later versus like, I should let her know now, sooner the better. I was like, my patient said they're fine, you know. I didn't think of it too long, but the longer I waited, the more I beat myself up, the more I started becoming ashamed that I made a mistake. I have been a nurse way too long to be making silly mistakes. Why was I so careless? These were the things that were popping up. Have you been there? Do you know what that feels like when you're like beating yourself up for whatever mistake you did? And as nurses, you know, people in healthcare, we have very little room for error. We're held to a standard of like almost perfection, which that is a whole nother subject. And we're gonna talk about that on the channel. So stay tuned. So have you been there just being embarrassed or even ashamed that you made a mistake? The crazy thing, I was so hard on myself and embarrassed to speak up about the device that I failed to realize the device had a defect. So this was a government given needle. So, you know, the vaccines were released very quickly. So the government were giving us, you know, not only the vaccine at a faster um, time and they were giving us uh, the needles as well and they were very flimsy they had the flip device and we're going to talk about a little bit about devices and uh, things that more likely lead to needle sticks but yeah I had a flip top that wouldn't even securely lock 
So I actually needed two hands. And I had noticed this for a while, even some of my other coworkers. But we were in such a frenzy, in such a rush to hurry up, get some vaccines in. We did not even think to say something. And that is a warning sign. So according to OSHA, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration's website, about 3,300, 385,000 sharp injuries occur annually to hospital employees. This is a large number for us. And it probably is larger because many of them go undocumented. Exposure to blood and other potentially infectious material because of unsafe needle devices or improper handling and disposal of the needles and other sharps. So basically OSHA is saying that we're more likely to get exposed to blood and other potentially infectious materials because of these two main reasons. Number one being unsafe needle devices. Number two is the improper handling. So more likely it's because there are unsafe needle devices and we need to speak up on it we are the ones using it we are the ones using these tools and we definitely need to speak up on it versus just blaming yourself that you made a mistake that you messed up yes we all have room for learning but if it's also a device that needs to potentially be changed or taken away or look let's find something else let's let's figure this thing out you have the power, you're in the field, so use your voice. So there are several needle devices that I wanted to talk about. You know, of course, OSHA wants to encourage that we use certain ones, which are like the needleless connector systems, which are great for IVs. You know, you have your IV line, you twist on the cap, boom, less needles. That's great, we like that. But when it comes to IMs, sub-Q shots, you know, insulin everybody's on insulin they recommend on the number two on the list is going to be the self-sheathing safety features that sliding device and i i've seen the sliding device a lot more or the retractable technology these are the top three there's also a self-blunting technology i haven't seen that one um but the last one on the list is the hinged safety feature. It still made the list for potentially a safe design, but honestly, it's last on the list and that was the type of design that we had in my hospital. Knowing what I know now, I'm so glad I even spoke up. Back to my story. So, I was feeling so ashamed. I finally went and told my director, my manager. She was very concerned. There was no type of judgment. There was no type of like, you know, what did you do wrong? Actually, I got that from occupational health. They were the ones that were treating me a little wrong. But anyways, that's another story for another time. That's okay. But, you know, my manager, the person that I thought was going to be hard on me, she actually showed me some compassion, some grace. And she was, like, really genuinely concerned. She was like, are you, or what happened? Like, let's do this. Let's, let me follow you through. You know, this is what we got to do next. And we did. And... I eventually, you know, later on after seeing her concern, you know, we talked about it. I brought it up to my coworkers. I said, this thing, you know, like I actually got a needle stick recently. And that was a, a new thing for me. I hate talking sometimes to my coworkers about things. You know, we all like to kind of just do our own thing sometimes. But this time I was like, no, I gotta say something. This is an incident that needs reporting and I should definitely say something. So I spoke up to my coworkers and they were like, actually, I think I've grazed my finger a couple of times trying to close that device. I gathered up a few other people that said similar things. Like I've almost like literally poked myself. Yeah, I noticed that too. Ding, ding, ding. So I then eventually the next day talked to pharmacy and they talked to the director. I said, look, we had a needle stick. What can we do to change it? Can we get another needle? Can we get another device? One needle stick is enough. We also had other nurses complain. I had to advocate for myself. It's so easy for us to advocate for our patients. But when it comes to myself, it's that uncomfortable vulnerability. Like I had to put myself out there. But 
it was needed. And there were other people that were feeling the same way. That's the crazy thing about it. And why they didn't speak up, they maybe have waiting for me to say something. So, spoke up to the pharmacy director and they discontinued that type of needle, the hinged device, no longer using that. And we now use the retractable device. I walk away feeling safe, secure, and more confident going forward that I can speak up. So even though I messed up in this situation, I definitely feel like I, I earned my stripes. I earned some confidence in this. And even though I may have, you know, messed up or in my mind at first, I was panicking that I made the wrong choice, that I did something wrong. This in turn became a learning opportunity for me. And that's really what I want to share with y'all. Sometimes we have these mindsets that, oh, you know, we should hold ourselves to a certain standard of perfection or that we can do things on our own. And sometimes we don't speak up. And especially in Latino culture, you know, like sometimes we don't want to look weak or look less than or that you need help, you know? So that was something new that I had to learn and I definitely had to get out of my comfort zone. But it then led to, you know, me having more confidence, feeling more safe or, you know, feeling that I could advocate for myself and really feeling like I made an impact and, you know, bringing my coworkers together like, hey, we should have, we should be thinking about this. Maybe there should be a policy in place. So hopefully that helps you in your own journey going forward, you know, don't feel bad if mistakes happen, things happen, it's life. But the great thing about it is you can use it as a learning experience. You can use it for something that can help you grow and become better and you know, go forward in your nurse wellness journey. Remember to take care of yourself. And I'd love to stay connected with you. I love having these chats on YouTube, but I'm also on Facebook. I have the nurse wellness community. That's where I live, that's where I'm at. So if you want more of this, more topics on wellness, more, more tips and tricks, more hacks to keep you your mind, body, and soul health, your mind, body, and soul goal health, then definitely get connected with me on the Nurse Wellness community on Facebook. I'm also on Instagram, Fallon underscore wellness coach. You can find me on LinkedIn and also all things me on RUL.com. I love being connected with y'all and I will see y'all next time. Take care. Bye.